The Build Show today, I got two awesome framers with me and we're talking hand cut versus truss roofs. Let's get going. All right, first off, Bill Wood, an awesome framer, has been working with me for what, 15, 16 years? Yeah. And Tim Euler, who's actually better known as Awesome Framers, <laughs> we have your hat on. So guys, I wanna talk about hand cut roof versus a truss roof. We're building a house here with a truss roof. Uh, Bill's crew's on this one, Tim's visiting. I'm curious from both your perspectives, which, first of all, which have you done more of over your 20, 30 year career? Stick frame, first? stick frame, You've definitely. Done more stick frame? Yeah, more absolutely. Stick yeah. Okay, so I've only done stick frame until this one as a custom builder, but my previous life as a production builder, I, I didn't know that people actually cut rafters. Like I had never been in a hand cut roof until my very first custom home. And my framer was like, yeah, of course I'm gonna hand cut that roof. I was like, what, I can get trusses for that? Why wouldn't we, why wouldn't we do trusses? He's like, this house is way too complicated for trusses. And from that point on, I thought they were beautiful and it made total sense to do them. But from this video, I wanna give some advice on why hand cut versus trusses? What are the pros and cons of each? So first off, Tim, what's, what do you think the pros are on a hand cut roof? So for us, it was scheduling. Like in the late 80s, we got so busy, trust companies were backed up. Mm -hmm. The old carpenters that worked for our company, they knew how to hand cut. And dad said, okay, let's do it. That kept them rolling all summer. Right. And then we just never looked back because we completely controlled our own schedule. So in other words, it was one more thing that you could do and control in your job yeah. rather than being uh, controlled by someone else's schedule. Yeah, because when they get busy, like a good friend of ours had to work with us for two months. They were six weeks out the day they were supposed to get trusses, six more weeks out. Oh my gosh. Now the crew is just dead in the water, right? Yeah. So it just let us control that. Now fast forward a decade or two, you're still hand cutting most yep. of your roofs, right? Yeah. And is that tradition or is that because you've got a better project at the end? Is it because you have a more open attic space? What is it that you like? Probably a combination of all of it. It's still primarily the schedule. Yeah. We have the ability to do it. I think that's kind of the, it's easy for us to do now. We've got the equipment, we know how to do it. We like the open attics. When I, we've got one plan I've priced both ways. It was a wash even with labor. We could have gone either way. But the more cut up the house gets, the harder it is to, the more time you have into the trusses. Yeah, that's a great point. Now, Bill, this is a pretty simple roof, really. We could have easily hand cut this roof. Yep. Uh, we're doing things a little different. Stay tuned for a future video where we're talking about why we've clipped these trusses rather than have the overhang uh, go on them. But there's a lot of modern houses that do this. Yep. Uh, any idea on how long you think this roof truss system took to actually install? Oh, let's see, we've got, it's going to be two days, you know, 16 hours for the guys and not everybody's working on it. So two days to install a truss roof. If yeah. we would have hand cut this, I would have dropped off a load of two by tens or two by eights out there. How long would it have taken you guys, let's say to hand frame? You know, not much longer just because of the simplicity of this roof. Uh, Chewy would have been down here cutting all his rafters, cutting his ridges, everything would be set an up. An extra three, an extra day, so maybe three uh, days? On this roof, okay. maybe an extra day, uh, day and a half, yeah. maybe. Not terrible. No, not at all. Material cost, though, is something that'd be, that'd be interesting to know, and I'll have to look back at my invoices to see exactly where that lands. I tend to think this truss package for us is a little less expensive I think than the solid two-by material. So. And really, that's a good point that I didn't, I didn't you know really snap to in terms of timing and scheduling because that is that is a big deal yeah. and austin has been moving just gangbusters for so long that uh unless you've got you know somebody who's gonna make <laughs> move you up in line uh you know you're waiting yeah. yeah just like everybody else now one difference in the part of the country we build uh we're down here in the south slab on grade construction Tim, you're up in the Pacific Northwest. You have a lot of crawl spaces, and typically you're running ducks in those crawl spaces, right? No, we've we've completely moved over to mini splits. Oh. So we're the only thing in a crawl at this point is maybe some wiring and, and some plumbing. And some plumbing, okay. Yeah. I was going to say one difference that I see is in Texas, you see a lot of trusses uh, with vented roofs, which is uh, not good because now my ducks are out of the condition space. Whereas this roof is going to be an insulated roof, unvented. There's going to be no soffit vents into the roof, no ridge vent into the roof. 
which means that trusses can get a little tricky to run ductwork through if you've got ductwork snaking through them and you've got a condition attic. So like at my personal house uh, that Bill and his crew built, we've got a very open system. My engineer designed it uh, with a very open concept where I've got uh, basically two by eight LVL rafters. And then I've got a couple of collar ties that are up high, but then we actually screwed all of the roof, uh, pardon me, all the ceiling joists on the second floor together, and then tied those with some structural SPAC screws into my rafters. So my attic is a giant open space. And it's one of the things I like about a hand cut roof is we can eliminate a lot of that by thinking ahead with the engineer and having a good frame carpenter on the job. Matt loves his attic. <laughs> I do love my attic. My attic I've is been a in that attic. attic. It's a pretty nice attic. Yeah, it's, it's a pretty, pretty nice. nice attic. I'll rent it out and move down. It's all right. Housing costs get more expensive. It's than pretty Seattle. nice. <laughs> Guys, it's hard to quantify, but in the end, I think if you've got a ventilated roof uh, where you don't have a lot of utilities up there, that's a perfect candidate for a truss. Uh, system for a roof framing. If you've got a mechanical space in there, if you're going to need to get into the space on a regular basis, I think a hand cut's the way to go. Now, I'm saying that, but I also have storage trusses on this job, which means I've got a big open space that I designed with the BFS truss crew to make sure that I've got room for my mechanicals, and Bill and his team are going to put some Advantech decking up there, so I actually do have some storage space, and I've got room for mechanicals with a nice set of pull down stairs. We've got a Facro stair going in here. So it can go either way, but if you're gonna get in there a lot, I think a hand cut's the way to go. If it's a typical ventilated roof that that's outside of your condition space, I think that's where trusses really make a lot of sense. Uh, and probably the last thing I'd mention is these are two particularly excellent craftsmen that have done a lot of roofs and their crews have done a lot of hand cut roofs. If you're gonna do a hand cut roof, you need a guy like this. You need someone who's been on the job and has done it before. You don't want someone to be your first time doing a hand cut roof. Would you agree with that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the laugh says it all. Yeah. The laugh says it all. And speaking of that, be sure to go check out Tim's YouTube channel. He's got a ton of content out there. He's awesome framers on both Instagram and YouTube, yeah. right? We'll put a link to both of those. Tim has done an amazing job as he's coming up on 50 years old of passing his wisdom down on the YouTubes for that future generation. And Bill's trained his crew, which also is passing that wisdom down. Hundreds of carpenters. Hundreds of carpenters. <laughs> You've trained a lot of good guys over the years. We've built a lot of good houses. Guys, if you're not currently a subscriber, hit that subscribe button below. New content here every Tuesday and every Friday. Follow me on Facebook or Instagram. Will you close it out with me? Otherwise, we'll see you next time on The Bill Show. Show.